Yes, sir. Just from seeing that, plus the head trauma, uh, the amount of head trauma she had to her face, I, I would not have expected her to make it through the night. She kept telling me she was, I'm about to pass out. I'm about to pass out. Adriana is my friend. I would never hurt her. In March of 2010, a man was chilling on his porch, enjoying the cool breeze, when suddenly he heard a faint sound coming from the bushes surrounding his house. He could not make out who it was, or if it was even a person, because it was pretty dark and the sound was faint. Soon enough, he heard the sound. This time, it was louder and it sounded like a woman's voice. As he looked around, trying to make out who it was, a dark shadow appeared out of the bushes. As it got closer, the man could make out it was indeed a woman who seemed like she was on fire. What even events led to the brutal attack on the young woman, and how were her attackers caught? Let's find out in the story of Adriana Zimmerman, the woman who went through hell, but survived to run away. That's the worst one I've seen. I couldn't couldn't believe she was still conscious and alert with the amount of burn she had. Did you feel her condition was grave? Yes, sir. On the cool evening in March of 2010, when that woman stumbled onto his house, the man quickly called 911. He described the woman as being so burnt that he couldn't make out her race, or if she was wearing clothes or not. Emergency services quickly arrived on scene, and the horror that greeted them was like nothing they had seen before. Yes, sir. Just from seeing that, plus the head trauma, uh, the amount of head trauma she had to her face, I, I would not have expected her to make it through the night. She kept telling me she was, I'm about to pass out, I'm about to pass out. Emergency services attempted to work on her, but there wasn't much they could do because the woman had suffered deep burns, but they did the best they could to stabilize her. As they loaded her onto the ambulance, she appeared to be in so much pain, but she gathered up the strength to tell them her story. So I told her to try to stay awake for me, and I wanted to get the info of the suspects before she passed out. She told them she was Adriana Zimmerman, who lived in a Pensacola trailer park, and three women who she thought were her friends had done it to her. In order to catch the people that did this to her, I needed her to tell me if she knew who it was. And I asked her why they did it to her, and she said, um, I thought we'd made up. Tina Brown, Heather Lee, and Brittany Miller, who she had thought she was on good terms with, had dragged her out of her house, tossed her multiple times until she was weak, hit her with a crowbar multiple times, and loaded in the trunk of their car before taking her to an unknown location where they hurt her some more, doused her in gasoline, and set her on fire. Adriana told the EMT that she was a mother of two, and she wanted to be able to see her children again. I told her, keep fighting. And uh, she kept saying over and over again, am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? And I told her I was going to try. And she said, "When I just tell me I'm going to wake up and see my babies. I got to talking to her and I told her that I was probably going to be the last person she talked to for a while. She then asked them to check in on her two children because they were home alone before she passed out. Adriana was taken to a local hospital where she was put in a medically induced coma. She died a few weeks after. Investigators showed up at the trailer park. They speak to Heather Lee first. What is going on? Okay. Well, first of all, we're investigating a right here with your, with your neighbor there behind you. Adriana? I guess. The lady lives behind you. Yeah. Listen to me now. Okay. I'm going to ask you some questions. Okay. I just see Adriana earlier today. All right. Uh, my name is Investigator Watts. I'm with the Sheriff's Office. Okay. The investigator gave Heather a little bit of information as to why they were out there. We were called out here on an ag aggravated, some type of disturbance tonight, okay, okay. where your uh, neighbor was uh, critically injured and you have been implicated, maybe having some knowledge or information or, or even being involved. Okay. At this point, it's curious that Heather doesn't immediately deny any involvement. She instead nods, okay, and waits for the investigator to continue, an act that the investigator did not miss. First of all, tell me, did you, did, do you know the situation we're, we're talking about here? No, that's why I keep asking what's going on. Okay. Where, where have you been all afternoon? What have you been doing? I've been here at the house. I was cooking. 
Without being asked the last time she saw Adriana, Heather volunteered the information. I see Adriana earlier today. Who? Adriana, my neighbor. She was down this way by my aunt's house talking with us earlier. And then I had one back in the house. I cooked and I laid down after that. Okay, who's, is anybody in the house with you? Nobody but my husband. He was in that suite. That's your husband? Bed, yeah. Y'all, it's just two of y'all live there? Yeah. My kids are with my mom. He then told her Adriana had been hurt. Okay, this girl was taken from her house and beaten up, okay? Okay, I seen her earlier today. She told me that she had a date. That's all she told me. And I asked her who it was. She was riding a bike up and down Detroit. Heather goes on to provide more information about Adriana's mysterious hot date. And I asked her when she went that way, I said, where do you keep going when you go that way? She kept saying Fowler. But she would never tell me where I'm about. And then she said, girl, I got a hot date tonight. Heather was then asked if she knew Tina. She responded pretty quickly. Do you know the lady lives in lot three back there? Tina, yes, I know Tina. All of us know each other out here. I met her when she first moved out. Okay, how long has she been here? Um, I'm not quite sure. It's been a couple months, so. Okay, she where, did you, where did you go tonight before we got here? The night before. Tonight. Tonight? Yeah. I didn't go anyway. So you've been in this you've been in your house. I've been here the and down time. by Tina House and by my aunt house and back here. Heather repeated to the investigator that she had been home cooking all night. I was here cooking. My other aunt, my mom's sister came around here, her and the kids. And I was in there cooking fish and fries. And it's still on the stove. Heather quickly provides possible alibis without the investigator even asking. That urgency in telling the officer about the fish still on the stove might be her way of trying to show she's telling the truth. However, ironically, her strong desire to provide evidence of her activities makes her appear more suspicious, as innocent people don't feel a need to validate their stories. I won't sit here and believe what you're saying, but we're getting information. You know what's going on here. You, you was... You and Tina. I don't know anything about what's going on here. Like I said, I was here at the house. Heather then goes on to list more people that could potentially back up her story. Mom called me on my cell phone. I talked to my mom. My aunt came here, her the kids. My two cousins was in the car with her. My aunt down in the fourth trailer, she seen me today. My uncle Charles. So seen you're, me today. you're sitting here and telling me that you and Tina, y'all didn't have a problem with this girl back there? I didn't have no problem with uh, Adriana. I've been hanging out with Adriana every day. All of us been hanging out together. You and young Tina didn't jump on her? No, I didn't do nothing to Adriana. I would not harm a hair on her head. Heather tried very hard to convince the investigator that she would not harm Adriana, but he doesn't seem to be buying it. To prove that she wouldn't hurt Adriana, she told the investigator she protected her once from girls who jumped her, insisting she never had a problem with Adriana. I haven't had any problems with her. Her kids, I always have her kids with me. Me and Adriana is just like that. Ever since she moved out here, we became friends. Is that all you, all you know about this? Yes, sir. Okay. And I put that on everything and I you, know. you swear that this <laughs> statement you gave me is the truth to the best yes, you're not? Sir. Yes, sir. Adriana is my friend. Heather maintained that was all she knew about the case, but Heather wasn't the only the cops spoke to that night. While Heather was waiting in the cop car, her husband was allowed to come in and talk to her, and it looked as if they were trying to get their stories straight. But then, a most curious conversation ensued when Heather's husband told her the officers asked him about a gas can. They talk about the gas can and everything else. What gas can? Gas can from the oil. Heather, who had been calm when the cops questioned, now raising her voice and appearing agitated when her husband mentioned the gas can, certainly makes her look very suspicious, and considering the fact that officers had not even told them the full story of what happened to Adriana, her over-the-top reaction stood out. Am I on arrest? You are not free to go at this time, so you can consider it whatever you want to consider it. You're not free to go right now. Okay. All right? Okay. okay. After they left the Pensacola trailer park, Heather, Tina, and her husband were taken to the station for further questioning. Tina's daughter Brittany had not been found, and the investigators put out her information, hoping to find her and bring her in for questioning. During her questioning at the trailer park, Heather repeatedly asked when she could see Adriana, and at the station, she appeared very distressed, rocking back and forth and chanting. Now the first thing the investigators asked them was why it took them so long to answer the door. Tina 
Tina said they had been watching movies all night, and she didn't answer the door because it wasn't her door to answer. Heather, however, said Tina hadn't been at her house most of the night, that she came knocking when the cops arrived, telling her the cops were outside the house. According to Heather, she was sleeping on the couch when Tina came knocking. Heather's husband, however, had a different story to tell. I'm confused here because Darren told me that y'all you and Tina were there and cooking all night. Heather then adjusted her earlier statement. Tina was there when I was cooking earlier. Okay. But she wasn't out there all night. Where'd she go? She had left. She told me she was going home. Okay. Heather then said, Tina left her house around 30 minutes to an hour before returning when the cops came. And she came in and she said, the cops outside. Adriana is my friend. I would never hurt her. Heather then went on to reveal that Tina was acting nervous when the cops came. And then she asked me, she said, where are the cops at? I said, they dying up by your house. Why you keep asking me where the cops at? Mm -hmm. And she went and never said. Again, Heather's husband had a different story to tell. I don't want to say the police was out there. Okay, so you, you don't recall Tina coming in and saying the police are outside? Tina was already in the house. Because your wife tells us that you and her are at home alone. Tina comes barreling in and saying, hey, the cops are outside, and y'all see the cops outside, and Tina's saying, don't answer the door. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. When the investigators questioned Tina about what happened that night, she started off by saying she didn't know of anything that happened that night. She told detectives she had been with Hather all night till the cops came. And um, did you go anywhere from there? Mm -mm. You were there all night until the cops came up there? Mm -hmm. Heather also revealed that she had seen Adriana that day. Actually, um, mm -hmm. Adriana, we, me and Adriana were together today. Okay. Where were y'all at together? At my house. Okay. What was going on there? We were just sitting there watching movies. But unlike Heather, Tina did admit to having issues with Adriana. Um, have y'all had any problems? Oh, yeah. We've had problems. The first three trailers, we've had problems for a long time. What's recently. the problems? Um... Well, lately, the new problem is she thinks that I'm the one who had her boyfriend locked up in jail. But Tina said they resolved the issue on that day and made up. But y'all getting along today, no problems. Yeah. Tina was then asked if she knew what happened to Adriana that day, and she denied knowing anything. Do you know what happened to Adriana tonight? No, I don't. Heather just said she got beat up, but that's all I know. A little bit more than that. We're not sure if she's going to make it or not. No, I don't. Tina not only does not react to news of Adriana possibly not making it, she goes ahead to affirm that she does not know what happened to her. The cop then reveals some information that shocks her. She talked to us, or she talked to the people that came over to help her. Mm -hmm. And she, she, she told them something. You know what she told them? I can just imagine what's mm. She said that you and Heather did this to her. So that's why we're talking to you two. Upon hearing that Adriana named them as suspects, Tina still doesn't show any reaction, which is quite bizarre. Instead, she went on to reveal that Adriana tended to say a lot of stuff. Oh, she's been saying a lot of stuff lately. Okay. She said I called, um, cause this is all stuff that we talked about today at my house. Okay. About um, somebody supposed to have, somebody supposed to have called Crime Stoppers on her about her kids, and I told her I didn't do it. Tina then told the cops that her and Adriana had both suspected each other of doing things but didn't have proof, so they let it go. Tina then revealed she and Adriana had had an issue when Adriana tried to tase her daughter. She was on the porch cussing, and she came out in the walkway, and she tried to tase my daughter. Who tried to tase your daughter? Adriana. Adriana got a taser? Mm -hmm. What kind of taser? Um, I just think it's, it was a black one. The cops then asked Tina why Adriana would say she and Heather hurt her if they hadn't. Tina went on to suggest that Adriana may have been jealous of her. Why would she say that you and uh, and Heather did this to her? Well, from what Heather telling me that Adriana is jealous. Adriana told me that the stuff that's supposed to happen going that she heard from Heather that I was the one who called um, children, the DCFS people mm -hmm. on her. Tina continued to appear nonchalant about Adriana's condition, which began to bother the investigators. You seem kind of lackadaisical about this. I'm, I'm telling you that this woman is uh, probably going to die and has named you as the person that's harmed her. It kind of, you know, doesn't sit easy with me that you're just so nonchalant about this. We're gonna go out there, we know what happened out there, 
It's just going to be a matter of getting fingerprints and evidence back, okay? The cops try to drum in the consequences of her action to her. What she told the fireman was that you two came over and grabbed her, pulled her out of that house, beat her, and harmed her. And just like that, Tina became emotional. Well, she said I called DCFS on her. She said I put her husband, I mean her boyfriend, in jail. Well, apparently she was right about that. Only one that I put her husband in jail, but I didn't call DCFS on her. Though at this point, Tina showed some reaction. She still maintained her innocence, and so did Heather. Brittany also maintained she knew nothing of what happened to Adriana when she was found and brought in the next morning for questioning. Eventually, though, the truth came out. Miles away from the trailer park where the chilling crime had taken place, investigators found plenty of evidence that put Tina, Heather, and Brittany at the crime scene. A crowbar was found in the grass near the crime scene. It was found to have splatters of red fluids that were a match for Adriana's DNA. The crime scene itself looked like a struggle had taken place, and there was a pair of white shoes that had the same red bodily fluids inside of it. Tina's car's tire tracks were also found to be a match to the tracks left at the crime scene. Inside the truck itself, there was even more evidence. Red bodily fluids were found smeared all over the car. A DNA test revealed it was a match for Adriana, but what was most curious were the strands of red and gold hair weave that were found at the crime scene, and they weren't a match for Adriana. So the investigators returned to speak to Tina about them. My daughter was fit, was doing it today. Is that a weave? It's weave. Weave. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Look, look at this right here. Oh, that's weave in there. That's weave in there. The officers found a bald spot at the back of Tina's hair that turned out to be a match for the weave left at the crime scene. There was also another important piece of evidence found at the scene, a black taser. If you remember, Tina had mentioned Adriana had tried to tase her daughter with a black taser she said belonged to Adriana. But during her interrogation, Heather said Brittany was the one who had the taser. Yeah, who had the taser? Uh, Brittany had a taser. Brittany had a taser. Did the, the taser belong to Brittany? I'm not sure. What did what, what that taser look like? Oh, uh, I seen it once before. It was big. It was long. It was a long taser. Mm -hmm. It was made, what color? Black. Have you ever seen Brittany with that taser before this? No. This, today was the first time I seen her with you saw Tina today or today? Today was the first time. Today you saw Tina, uh, I Brittany. I seen Brittany with it on the counter earlier. Heather then said she asked what the taser was for, but they told her to stay out of their business. But when the cops asked Tina about the taser, she denied knowing it was at her house. Taser at my house? Mm -hmm. I don't know about it. You don't know about a taser at your house? No, sir. I've been told about a taser at your house. I didn't know it was there. You don't know anything about it, huh? The investigators tried to turn Tina against Heather by feeding her information that made it look like Heather was trying to pin it on Brittany, which she was, but Tina didn't budge and maintained her innocence. Brittany also denied having a taser when the cops asked her about it. After receiving more information from Tina's family members who she told about their attack on Adriana in very clear details, in addition to the evidence they'd collected at the crime scene, the investigators confronted Tina Brown with the truth. In a final attempt to make Tina confess or show remorse, a detective shows her a photo of Adriana's badly burned body. Let me, let me look at it. I want you to look at him so you, I know you, you understand what I'm saying. The medical staff and the medical examiner's office didn't even know if this girl was white or black, or black female or white female. Because she was so burnt so bad. And on May 10, 2010, Tina Brown, Heather Lee, and Brittany Miller were placed under arrest for the murder of Adriana Zimmerman. During the trial of Tina Brown, the full information of what truly went down on that tragic night was revealed. It turned out that Tina's 16-year-old daughter, Brittany, was on and off besties with Adriana, who also lived with them in the Pensacola, Florida, trailer park. Like many teen friendships, it ran hot and cold, depending on the current drama in the trailer park. In March of 2010, it was frigid and it was all over a boy. Police reports say Brittany complained to her mom, Tina, and a neighbor, 27-year-old Heather Lee, about the ongoing arguments with Adriana, who was already a mom of two at 19 years old. The trio decided to lure her to Tina's trailer and weaken her so Brittany could fight her. Things got out of hand. Tina Brown was charged with first and second degree murder. She pled guilty. During her Spencer hearing, a proceeding to determine whether or not she would get the ultimate sentence, Tina was remorseful for her part in Adriana 
Anna's murder. She tearfully told the court, I remember back, looking at the autopsy pictures. They haunt me today. During closing arguments, Assistant State Attorney Bridget Jensen detailed what Adriana told rescuers when they found her sitting on the steps of the man's house. They tased me. They beat me in the head with a crowbar and set me on fire. My friends did it. I thought we had made up. The jurors were shown five photos, chronicling the severe burns that contributed to Adriana's passing. Eugene Hart, an Alabama medical examiner and the last prosecution witness, explained each photo. In the pictures, most of Adriana's body was charred, bruised and bloody from the burns and beating. The only parts untouched by the burns were her right ankle and calf. Pamela Valley, a friend of Tina's from Wisconsin, also testified against her saying, Tina asked her to finish Adriana off at the hospital a few days after she survived the horror they put her through. She told me to go finish off Adriana. Tina Brown was given the ultimate sentence, the third woman in Florida's history to be given that sentence. Heather Lee pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. Her plea was conditioned on her testifying against Tina Brown. She told the court she had been forced to participate. In 2022, Tina Brown's attorney filed a motion to vacate her conviction based on some new evidence, but the court denied the motion. She remains on death row till today. As for her daughter, Brittany Miller, she was given a life sentence. In 2017, she was granted a new sentencing hearing after a Supreme Court ruling made it unconstitutional to give juveniles an automatic life sentence. She was once again sentenced to life. Hey, thanks for watching. We honor those affected by this tragedy and welcome your respectful thoughts and reflections. Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in a comment. And before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button.